Turning next to internal fruit feeding Lepidoptera, in New York, we actually have a complex of three species capable of causing this type of damage to fruit, codling moth, oriental fruit moth, and lesser apple worm. They all cause damage that's relatively similar and not always possible to separate in the field. Codling moth and OFM both feed throughout the fruit and codling moth damage is somewhat more severe, especially since they often eat the seeds. Also, codling moth is a bit more likely to enter through the side and OFM often prefers the calyx. However, these are not hard and fast rules, so there are exceptions. Lesser apple worm, on the other hand, nearly always restricts its feeding to just under the surface and is more likely to produce these shallow tunnels that resemble mines. Here are some notes on codling moth biology. It originated in Asia in quince, apple, and pear and was brought to the U.S. by the first U.S. colonists. Its hosts in this part of the world include apple, pear, quince, and also hawthorn and crab apple. Additionally, it's a sporadic pest of apricot, peach, and plum, particularly in plantings adjacent to a high population in apples. It also attacks walnut, which may be a different strain of the species. And the larvae can overwinter in bin piles from an infested crop. Now the pattern of coddling, coddling moth flight has a very characteristic shape. The first catch occurs in mid to late May in New York with a peak soon after emergence and then often decreasing noticeably until producing a second or B peak before tapering off in July. The second flight is usually smaller and less well-defined. Currently the mean date of first catch in Geneva is May 18th. But in 2020, for instance, Biofix in Geneva was May 22nd, occurring slightly later in Wayne County and earlier in the Hudson Valley. As a rule of thumb, Biofix roughly corresponds with King Bloom in Red Delicious. Here are some stats on the egg stage. Egg laying starts at about 100 degree days, base 50, after Biofix. The eggs are laid singly and are flat, oval, and about 1 20th of an inch in size. They show a red ring and later a black head stage visible inside as the larva develops. Eggs are mostly laid on upper leaf surfaces in apples or lower surfaces in pears and on the fruit. A female can lay about 100 eggs, most of which are laid during the first five days of this activity. One key fact is that eggs hatch in six to 14 days, starting about 250 degree days after biofix, which is an important timing window for the application of larval controls. Coddling moth larvae are about one tenth of an inch in size when newly hatched and growing to about five eighths of an inch when they mature. They're creamy white to pinkish in color with a black head capsule when they're young and this turns brown as they get mature. Now, an important distinguishing feature is that they don't have an anal comb, which is a structure at the rear end of the larva, which can be seen on OFM in this photo. They spend three to four weeks feeding in the fruit. In terms of the injury caused by the larvae, all of which is internal, there can be stings which are shallow entries caused by larvae that were either killed or else have exited from the fruit, as well as deep entries. These extend to the core and lead to fruit rot. And they commonly feed on the seeds. It's possible to find multiple larvae of coddling moth in a single fruit. Interestingly, Coddling moth was formerly not a real problem in New York apple orchards, but in the early 1990s, severe outbreaks of coddling moth started occurring in commercial apple orchards throughout the world, starting first in apple growing regions of Washington and California. Since then, outbreaks of internal lapse have occurred in commercial apple orchards in all major production areas of the U.S. 
And most of these have been associated with the development of insecticide resistance and often to multiple classes of, com of compounds. Several factors have been attributed to the lack of effective control in, of codling moth and or, or you know, fruit moth in apples. As noted, resistance to standard insecticides probably plays the major role. But biological factors such as overwintering survival or changes in generation timing or duration could also be responsible, along with less than adequate performance of new materials. This stems from changes in spray programs made since the 1996 Food Quality Protection Act resulted in the cancellation of many older standard materials. Then of course, there can be poor timing or stretching of spray intervals resulting in gaps of opportunity, as well as use of rates that are too low and as always inadequate spray coverage. And rain events can contribute to this problem. Since these species co-occur during the season, one complication in effectively managing them is the difference in life histories between codling moth and oreo fruit moth. You can see that the first generation of codling moth requires targeted management efforts right here, while the first generation of OFM can usually be taken care of by well-chosen petal, petal fall sprays at Plum Curculio. The later broods of the two species are out of sync, as you see here, so there can be a continuous threat of damage from one or the other for the entire summer. I just note here that lesser appleworms biology corresponds fairly closely with codling moth, so it usually doesn't require separate control actions. Pheromone trapping is a commonly, is a commonly used tactic to help in the decision-making process for the, these species. Trapping provides information on detection, in other words, presence of the species uh, in, your, in your orchard, as well as the specific identification of which species you have. When they occur, thereby, thereby establishing a biofix. How many there might be for a general determination of pest level. Not exact, but certainly five moths per trap means something different from 25 per trap. And trapping permits identifying significant points in the life cycle. For instance, you can chart the developmental progress through knowing the first flight, the peak flight, the hatch period, etc. As for how many traps to use, uh, one trap per five acres is a useful approach for research, but probably idealistic and not too practical for most growers. A more realistic target might be one trap for every 10 to 20 acres. But no traps is definitely asking for trouble. Monitoring for the adults of these species involves choosing from several options, such as which type of trap to use. And you can see there are several products available. Also, what type of lure might be used? There's a red septum lure, which is cheap, but has a short field life, only three to six weeks. More practical is the gray septum or L2 lure, which is more expensive, but has a longer field life. And also there's a CMDA lure, which contains the pheromone plus pear essence, which increases the number trapped and is more useful to use in uh, mating disrupted blocks. General guidelines for using collie moth and OFM trap catches for management decisions in New York apples look like this. First, use pheromone traps to establish a biofix, the first trap capture, for calculating degree to accumulations. These can either be calculated by hand or more simply by using NUA. For codling moth, recall that a base of 50, 50 degrees Fahrenheit is used, whereas for oriental fruit moth, fruit moth the base is 45 degrees. Then to, to determine the need or and or the timing for sprays. For codling moth, if your catch is more than five per week, applications generally start 
at 250 degree days, phase 50, after biofix of each flight. However, for ovicides, this should become a little closer to the biofix recommended at 150 degree days. For oriental fruit moth, if you're catching more than 10 per week, treatments are recommended starting at 170 degree days, base 45, after biofix of each flight. In general, the first broods of each species are handled during the period of the petal fall to first cover sprays. If you have both species, which is quite common in many situations, it's necessary to use trap catch thresholds for either or both pests. And you can appreciate that this can get a little complicated unless you pay close attention to which moths are being caught in your traps.